We're going to go over occlusion culling in Unity iPhone. Occlusion culling is a rendering optimization that allows us to ignore meshes which are obscured from view of the camera. Uh, so if you look at our scene right now, we have about 900 draw calls on a little under 30,000 triangles. So we're going to turn on occlusion culling and reduce that. So the first thing you want to do is go to Game Objects, Create Other, View Area. Now the view area is going to determine where your camera can be and have occlusion calling work. So the first thing we need to do is position our view area around the camera. So I'm just going to do a, a quick small test of the view area, placing it on top of the camera and not filling the entire room just so that I can show you the differences between when occlusion calling is on and when it's not. So I've positioned my view area the next thing I'm going to do is go to Edit, Generate Occlusion, Preview. After clicking this, it does some calculations, which take a while. And when we come back, we can see that we have significantly fewer draw calls and polygons. So if we want to see exactly what occlusion calling is doing, you can go up to the uh, top of your scene view and select Occlusion. Now, you'll see many of the meshes turn off. This is actually showing us that the, these are the meshes which occlusion culling has deemed are invisible to us right now. If I move my main camera out of the view area, the occlusion culling no longer works. So all of those meshes come back. So this is why we need to make sure that our view area covers everywhere that the camera can possibly go. Otherwise, your uh, player could move the camera outside of it and occlusion culling no longer helps us. So now I'm going to show you how to uh, position the view area like you would in a real game. So the easiest way I find to do it is to uh, go into an orthographic view so that I can see exactly how large my room is and I don't have any of that perspective distortion. Uh, the key here is to fill the entire room wall to wall, but you don't want to go outside of the walls. You want to keep it as close to that wall as you can. So I'm going to expand it out in my... Uh, X and Z axes, and it's already positioned correctly in Y. And then I can generate my occlusion culling for the entire room. So again, I'm going to go back to Edit, Generate Occlusion, Preview. Now when I clicked Preview, it didn't actually generate our occlusion culling. And the reason for that is that occlusion culling requires your meshes to be static. Uh, so I go back, select the meshes uh, that do not move, and mark them as static. Then when I click pre preview, it will generate the correct occlusion calling. So one of the key controls you have when working with occlusion calling is cell size. If I select the cell size parameter in my inspector and change it, you'll see these yellow cubes inside of my view area changing size. Those are the cells which uh, visualize the sampling rate for our occlusion calling system. So if I increase the density of those cells, we're going to be sampling more often. So you generally want to strike a balance where you want these cells to be small enough where they can share information, but you don't want to make it densely packed like this. This is a little overkill and it's going to take a much longer time to calculate. So you want to create a grid that looks more like this. Uh, less densely packed, but you want a fairly large number of cubes so that we have a high sample rate. Now the number of cells that you have is going to affect your occlusion calculation time, but it's also affected by what you select under Generate Occlusion. So under Edit Generate Occlusion, we have three options. Uh, the first option is Preview. Preview is recommended for when you're working in the editor. It is the fastest solution you have but it's also our least accurate calculation. Build Preview is recommended for when you're building to the device. It's slower than Preview, but it's a better calculation. Build Release is, of course, recommended for when you are building your final release application. Everything I've shown you so far has been for static meshes, but occlusion calling can also call non-static meshes. So in order to do this, we need to create a bounding volume area. And this bounding volume area looks similar to a view area, 
Except instead of defining where our camera can go, this bounding volume area tells us where non-static meshes can move and be culled by occlusion culling. So we position our bounding volume areas in our scene and then any object that passes through them can be culled.